This project has a special uh, place with me. Uh, one of my work colleagues, uh, Sheldon Souter, uh, a couple years ago, brought to my attention your videos. And of course, your, your subscribers uh, are all over and they want to see what BC looks like. And, I, and I've been to a lot of those places too. So I, I, this kind of had a special uh, place for me to watch for your Saturday releases. And then when you said that you were going to do a build, it can be a little bit complicated. I thought, well, that can be our contribution to this. I like what you're doing. I like your videos. And it's just something that uh, I think is the right thing to do. There's no blueprint for anything that we're doing here. Um, you just got to kind of come up with an idea and then put it into place, you know, fabricate around it. It's uh, definitely not something that we're used to doing, but uh, it's, uh, we're always up for a challenge. I started Stinger Welding in 1979 just with myself and a welding truck and we've grown it. I've hired some very good people, have some very good people working for me and grown it to what it is today. In the old days I did a lot of bush work with a welding truck and that's now transformed to uh, work for some large clients. Uh, we do a lot of field work, we have portable service trucks uh, we work for our electrical utility, BC Hydro. They're doing an expansion program all over the province. We, we have some specialty welders for them. We do virtually everything. Um, any kind of general fabrication. Uh, mainly we do bridges, that's our, kind of our bread and butter. Um, but we also do aluminum. Uh, pressure pipe welding. Yeah, we do quite a bit of large scale, but we'll do anything right down to, you know, just general stuff off the street. When I first reached out to Stinger Welding, I was only asking for help to install the camper. Unfortunately, that didn't end up being possible because of the damage we found on the camper. So this went from what should have been a pretty easy camper installation on the frame to kind of salvaging what I had. Once we got in, started looking at it, seeing the damage that was there, knowing that that's not going to last over time, um, we needed to figure out a way to cradle it and, you know, kind of girdle it and keep it, keep it together, keep it so it's going to last for years to come. Well, there's a saying amongst the welders, we can fix everything but a crack of dawn and a broken heart. Something like this is very uh, rewarding and it's also uh, a challenging job and I think that's where the one-offs is where we, we really excel and this is a one-off but uh, we treat this as a equally important job to all the rest of our jobs and projects. We're basically just building a frame that's going to encapsulate the bottom portion of the camper um, try and keep it you know keep it structurally sound it's it's obviously lacking in in support and it has been for quite some time um, so yeah what we're building is is gonna hold it all together and support it you know regardless of where you go the damage to this camper was a problem that I really didn't have a solution for so getting to see this whole portion of the build come together was really fascinating and it felt great to finally have some professional help for a change. But that's not the only thing that makes this portion of the build really special. When I worked on cruise ships, I was very fortunate to make friends with people all around the world and some of those friends are currently in the Ukraine. We all know about the challenges currently happening over in the Ukraine and Stinger Welding has put effort into making a positive difference in the lives of some of the people stuck in that situation. As everybody seems to know at this time, there's a shortage of 
skilled tradespeople around with so much work that we've going, had going on. So what I've been trying to do is reach out to the local Prince George Ukrainian group and finally connected and I had the opportunity to hire two of the fellas that I have now and I hired them in last October and they've been with us ever since. There's been a bit of a challenging uh, communication issue but uh, we have the translation and they've picked up English very good, way faster than I can do the Ukrainian. In Ukraine I finished the technical university for the specialty of technology and machine training. I worked in Ukraine on the job as a welder, as a welder. И потом поехал в Польшу, так само там работал сварщиком и сборщиком. То есть мы собирали по рисункам, обваривали эти детали полностью. Those guys, uh, I mean, they're, it's definitely a, a language barrier, you know. Uh, obviously we're using Google Translate as much as we, much as we can, uh, but uh, yeah, these guys, they, they're, they're very well versed in what they do, regardless of the language. The language that we both speak is fabrication and welding. And uh, I think that, uh, that shows in the work that they do. Мне больше нравится собирать своими руками, нежели чем сидеть за компьютером и рисовать рисунки или чертежи. Поэтому мне больше нравится что-то производить. Так, у меня есть семья, жена и трое детей, но они пока что находятся на Украине. Я думаю, это хороший проект. Первый раз мы делаем такой проект, но я думаю, что мы его сделаем. И, может быть, в дальнейшем такие проекты пойдут и будут в будущем, как бы так сказать, реализовываться нормальная работа. The candidate truck for this build is a 1995 Dodge Ram 3500, but this is not a conventional pickup truck. This is a cabin chassis, so the frame is a fair bit longer than normal. So with that came the challenge of the trailer hitch, because I don't go anywhere without my boat. But the frame ended right behind the rear leaf hanger. So we really needed another three feet of frame to get to the back of the camper and six inches of drop to get underneath the camper. Again, there's no blueprint for that. So it's just a matter of figuring out what we have to work with, uh, what we have to work around, and then fabricating as needed. We're going to double up underneath the frame, bolt onto that, and then weld in uh, kind of a drop down frame that's going to extend off the main frame of the axle. Today's the big day. We're actually going to be mounting the camper onto the truck. Everything that Stinger Welding has built here has fit up incredibly well. So it should be as easy as just backing the truck underneath and lowering the camper. We're gonna find out. Yeah. As expected, the camper fit into place 
perfectly, which is a huge relief because we're working with three different components here. The camper, the cradle, and the frame supports. And all of them had to line up perfectly. But of course, working with professionals, that baby slipped on there like a piece of Lego. But unfortunately, it's not all good news. The trailer that I bought the camper on was supposed to become the new Expedition trailer and replace my poor, old, heavily used, somewhat broken boat trailer. But the new one itself is already broken and it's looking like it's gonna cost more to fix it than to replace it. So we're switching gears a little bit and we're giving my old boat trailer a major facelift. Which means replacing the broken reach with a new and far more heavy duty piece of HSS, new and heavier duty axle, one that's long enough to accommodate some larger tires, which should help with bearing wear, tire wear, and ground clearance leaving me not just a solid truck, but a solid trailer too. The old Dodges uh, are pretty bulletproof. Uh, I think you've, uh, you've looked at your Dodge all the way through. You've seen it, I'm sure it had some hard miles back in the day and you've gone through it. You'll have enough uh, ground clearance. Uh, the only issue will be in, in height, of course, uh, with, a, with a camper, but you're gonna be able to go a lot more places than uh, you could with the motorhome and I think that that's important uh, to a lot of places you want to go is uh, a smaller unit and you just drop your trailer somewhere and uh, you can go where you couldn't go before. I think it's going to be exactly what you need. Um, yeah, it's you'll have tons of storage. Um, I think a little more than you actually originally planned. Um, yeah, and it, it, it's going to be just a good all-around unit for, for getting in. If you need to go into a, you know, an off-road place, you can definitely do it with this. So. It would be a lot more versatile than the motor home, that's for sure. You've got the experience, you can fix your truck now on the side of the road. I guarantee you that when you're traveling uh, in the Arctic or Tuktoyaktik or the Northwest Territories that our portion of the job isn't going to fail. So that's uh, what's important. You won't have your trailer hitch fall off. So this, as I said, uh, this is a unique project for us and we do one-offs and we're pretty happy to participate in this. Can you guys believe it? It's really coming together starting to look a whole lot more like an expedition truck, a lot less like a pile of parts on the floor. Let me give you the tour. Well, we'll just start at the front of the truck and work our way back. Sheldon designed tow hooks, one on either side. Hopefully I will never need them, but if I do, they are there. You'll notice the camper is positioned further back on the frame than a regular pickup truck, and that's because the drop down on the camper would have interfered with the frame here, this being a cabin chassis that kind of threw us a bit of a curveball. So the whole thing's 21 inches back, which I was not overly excited about at first, but it's worked out perfect. First of all, the front of the camper is level with the cab. I like that. And then we have this 21 inch pass through that is going to be incorporated into the storage. That's where I can store the outboard motor and the generator, things like that. And now the entire camper is cradled and supported by this, which turned out really good. I will never have any concerns the whole lifetime that I have this vehicle. We mounted the camper here at the front and this will have to be incorporated into my storage boxes somehow to mount the camper at the back. These mud flaps are just temporary, so I don't chip the fiberglass while I'm driving home. Coming around back, Sheldon designed this really nice bumper, wired it up, and you'll be really impressed with the job he did on the hitch. Look at this. Really amazing work. And the spare tire. This is another 
thing I didn't know how I was gonna solve is where I was gonna put that spare tire. It's literally just pull this pin out here and that will drop down. You can slide your tire out and it just hinges over there. Just barely clears the exhaust. But the detail these guys have is really amazing. Another really neat detail. Look at that. Awesome. Won't be using it when the trailer's on, but when the trailer's not there, I got a step. Pretty much the same on this side. That's the whole rig. We've done a fair bit of work to the trailer as well. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the trailer. So you remember in Alaska, my reach broke in half. So we replaced that with a brand new piece. This is going to be where the e-bike is mounted. Haven't quite figured that out yet, but we'll get there. Coming back, I did a much larger and slightly wider axle so that I could accommodate larger tires. I hated having those tiny little tires because they just spin a thousand miles an hour. This will be way, way better and get in way more places. And then this spare tire held right there. Pretty friggin' awesome. So, there she is. Let's get into our weekly cost breakdown. All right. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know how I want to approach this week's cost breakdown. I do this breakdown for anyone that might be embarking on a similar build, then you know what to expect financially. If you do a better job sourcing your camper, this whole cradle will not be necessary. For me, it was necessary, and this was a huge donation, not in just supplies and time, but also labor. So I wanna give a huge thank you to Stinger Welding for this. They did a tremendous job on the truck and the trailer. That camper would have lasted a short time, but it was not gonna be good long-term. Now I trust it will never be a failure point. So a huge thank you to Stinger Welding for everything. Now I do have some regular expenses, so let's get into that. I did have to get a new drop hitch because this new rig is so much higher than the motorhome. So a hitch and ball, Princess Auto Supreme, 40 bucks. The axle and fenders came to $525.19. And I also had to get a full second set of hubs. This axle is the 60 inch axle. It's the only one that is wide enough to accommodate larger tires. But if I go any wider, it's gonna be outside the legal distance you can have from your hanger to the hub. And for whatever reason, that's the only axle that comes with four bolt hubs. So I had to get a whole extra set of hubs. $211.65, little bit of money into wiring and lights, $195. Gas and accommodations, a lot of trips back and forth <laughs> from Williams Lake to Prince George, $495. Tires, I did, I did get a whole new set of tires for the truck and a complete set for the new double axle trailer. Before I knew that the trailer wasn't gonna work, but part of rebuilding this was making it so that I could use the tires from the other trailer. So we made that one work and everything's gonna be okay. Tires were $2,158, actually surprisingly good for 10 tires installed and balanced, giving us a grand total of $3,624.84. Pretty high this week, but that's just because of those tires. Thank you guys so much for enjoying this build series. Thank you for your patience in between these adventures. Balancing the truck build and the videos has thoroughly exhausted me. So I am really looking forward to getting back to some adventures. We really only have one more big project. That is all the storage compartments and then a little bit of small jobs in the camper and we'll be ready to hit the road. So from the bottom of my heart, thanks for watching everybody.